Hi guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be covering up a very important topic called Docker. It is so important that almost every developer companies are using this technology to manage their projects, to build their projects and to deploy their projects. It solves a lot of problems that people have been facing before. So this video is for beginners. I'll try to explain each and every topic so that you can understand how to use Docker in your projects. So this video covers up an introduction. What is Docker? How to use Docker? when to use docker i'll be trying to covering all the required commands for you to know how to use docker how to manage docker images how to run containers and all other required commands i'll be using one small node project and i'll be integrating docker in that project then i'll be building the project then i'll show you how we can convert that built image of that node project so that you can share that docker image for that project with someone who can use docker to use and run the project on their systems as well so first of all let's get started and talk about what is docker so i'm going to be covering up some theory for a few minutes i know many people don't like to watch theory i don't like as well but this theory is also very important for you to learn docker how it works i will be talking about and illustrating you each and every topic on my drawing pad as well by drawing in different diagrams so let's get started talking about theory for one to two minutes so what is docker first of all it is a platform or you can say a tool set or in simple words you can say a project builder that allows you to develop deploy and run applications inside containers so docker containers are basically a lightweight standalone executable packages that include everything needed to run a piece of software including the code runtime system tools libraries and all the settings that project required to run the project so docker provides a consistent and efficient way to package distribute and run your projects irrespective of technologies that you are using Using. So these application works across the different environments, whether you are using Mac, Windows, Linux or any other operating system, then it works in the local development machine as well. It works well in the test server or in the production server perfectly well without caring about the dependency or variant conflicting issues. Docker take care all of these things itself. So there are some concepts that Docker contain. You can call it the pillars of Docker. These are very important. It's very important that you have some understanding on these topics and you will have a better understanding when we'll come to the practical examples for these things. So let's start off with the image. Images are basically the read only templates. You can say a blueprints and that is used to build different containers. Containers are the running form of the images and images or you can say a zipped form of the project that contains the application code runtime system tools all the settings and the libraries that are required to run your project so let's say that you have built a project in node and for building the project in node you need to install node npm and you need to install mongodb in order to integrate that you need to install postgres or other databases in your own operating system for running the docker in your project and whoever wants to run their project using docker they don't need to install all of these tools and the software in their own system they just need docker and docker will automatically install and manage all of these things uh, and run the project on its own because you can say that it is a small operating system that automatically install all the required packages runtime dependencies and the tools to run the project that's why it is so important that it uses the os kernel of your system and it runs the project and install all the tools and dependencies on its own and next one is the containers containers you can say it's just an image but it's a running form of that image you can run multiple containers by giving it different names out of one image okay and images are also very important because through images we can uh, store different variants we can manage different versions of our project on any hosting server the the most important hosting server is the docker hub that contains uh, the 
images for all the different technologies out there in the world so container is you can say a running form of that image that contains all the projects toolings and the system next one is the docker file that contains different configuration for a project that these 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 dependencies are required to run the project and this uh, file needs to be copied this is the folder that contains all the images all the assets all the required dependencies i'll be showing you when i'll be integrating docker in my node project at the end of this video and this is what i was talking about registry docker hub is a popular registry where you can find and share docker images and we can also upload our built image for our project on the docker hub as well okay so next one is the docker compose it's just like the docker file but docker compose is used to build our project when we have a multi-container docker application almost all the big projects are multi-container because we need to use databases we need to use orms we need to use uh, design libraries like the tailwind css or shade cn ui or postgres database so it's very important to know the docker compose as well so these are the some important concepts in docker so now i'll be explaining you all of these concepts on my drawing pad by drawing different shapes so you can get better understanding about docker and all of the pillars of docker so let's say that you have a project idea that you want to build and this project you want to build using node all right and uh, for building the project using node you might need to install different dependencies you might need to install express you might need to install mongodb for managing database you might need to install mongoose and all the different dependencies that you want to install and for running this project using node what are the different tools you need to install in your system you need to have npm package you need to have node installed in your system you need to have mongodb to run your database test the apis you need to have the postgres you need to have all the different tooling system that are required to run your project in your local system and all of these dependencies are installed with specific version that you have chosen for running in inside your project so let's say that once this project is built in in your local system and you are successfully running it in your local host as well okay so let's say that you want some other person to work on this project as well so there is another developer who wants to work on this okay what he needs to do he needs to pull this project from any repository and this repository contains all of the files exist in the project what the other developer needs to do he needs to install all of these required tools like the node npm postgres mongodb mongoose uh, robo 3d for the ui representation of the database in his system first of all and set up uh, the python or the django database in his own system so it can take quite a while for him to install in his system first of all before running this project on his system okay and same for the hosting server same for all other developers that uh, you uh, want to share your project with okay this is the problem that is solved by docker what docker does is it takes all these required tooling packages all the files asserts and docker build the project and the build form of the project that is done by the docker is called an image that can not just contain the files and the folders and the assets of the project but all the required tooling which is required to run this project and all the variants of that dependencies and the toolings run required to run the project if that image is converted for this project what the other developer needs to do is the other developer needs to just just install the docker in their system nothing else he does not need to install node npm postgres uh, python uh, or django or any mongoose robo 3t in his system he can just install the docker 
and he can pull the image from any hosting server or from the local uh, shareable format image of that project then he just need to run docker run and the name of that project and this command is going to automatically install and configure all the required tooling to run this project that contains all the different uh, technologies programming languages databases and all the variants so with the help of docker we have avoided setting up our local system a new local system to run the project and it uh, avoids the errors that can cause because of the variant mismatching of the different dependencies we have used to run over this image that contains everything of this project all right so this is how the docker flow works it converts the image when we run uh, the docker and the image name this commands convert this image into a container okay container is the running form of the image and we can have multiple container out of that image by providing the different name for that image image can have a different variants as well stored in the docker hub or any server so this is very important and i hope that you have got an idea that what is the benefit of docker and how the docker actually uh gets converted into an image and one more thing that i've already explained you during this process of converting it into the image it uses two things it uses docker file or it uses docker compose okay i'll be showing you how we can build it using this docker file of our node project all right and once we are we have a running container we have a lot of commands that i will be showing you uh, after this part uh, that are required in your terminal uh, to run the container to stop the container to build the image to uh, run the container and test it on our browser in the running form for the project all right so let's get started and go to the installation of docker in our local system so before moving forward i just want to show you that this is my first video on docker before that i've created all the videos related to latest technologies like next.js 14 angular latest version node express mongodb random tech tutorials react performance javascript and much more videos you can check out my playlists if you want to learn more so it will help me it will encourage me to create more videos for you guys if you subscribe my channel and like this video and also if you need any development services you can contact me on my linkedin the link is in the description of this video so let's get started talking about the docker if you open up the docker.com on your browser you can go through all the different things added in it so i'm going to click on the get started first of all we need to download and install docker in our system it can work well on linux mac and windows operating systems so from here you can download it for mac linux and click on the download for windows i'm using windows the reason is that some people face a lot of issues while configuring docker in windows operating system so while i face those issues i will be able to guide you to figure out and fix those issues that's why i'm using windows system for this video all right so i've already installed for my windows you can click on it it will download a setup and you can install it in your system and uh, if i go to this docker hub as i told you earlier that it contains all the images of the docker for all all the different technologies all the major technologies out there you can see the engine x this is what i'll be showing you while explaining you different commands we have this docker ai and ml image mongodb uh, mysql postgres and we can click on the view all uh, so you can see that we can filter this out and these are all the different images and we don't need to configure it locally in our system we can just pull the images from here and we will be uh, able to use it and um, i will be showing you at the end of this video when i will be configuring my node project with docker okay and uh, now 
let's go and open up the terminal i'm going to open up the terminal and show you if the docker is installed so in the terminal i'm going to simply write docker hyphen hyphen version so this is the current version of docker installed in my system okay and another thing i want you guys to install is the docker desktop you can just google docker desktop and it will take you to the slash products slash docker desktop url and from here you can download it for your linux mac or windows i've already downloaded Loaded it i'm just going to show you how it looks like all right so on the right side you can see that i've opened up the docker desktop and on the left side i have opened up the terminal most people use only terminal terminal is most powerful for all the commands but the ui view ui representation of the containers images volume dev environments really helps us figuring out what's happening without opening up the terminal and running the commands okay we should be able to know what are the different commands for all the things happening here in the docker desktop so i'll be showing you everything in the terminal the docker desktop is just for elaboration okay and uh, let's go over here i've already shown you how we can check the docker version and then i can write the command docker images it's going to show me all the images exists on my system installed okay and on the right side you can see that it is showing the exact number of images which are installed currently in my system i have mongodb multi-container app node app redis test docker node these are the images installed in my system first of all i'm going to show you how we can use any image from the docker hub all right so i've opened up docker hub and we can use any image from it we can pull this out and we can run the container out of that image and you can see that postgres mongodb mysql all of these tools are used 1 billion time this is insane so i'm going to open up uh, this search bar and i'm going to search for nginx so the first link is for the nginx this is also used 1 billion times i'm going to click on that and here you can see that all the different versions of this image exists over here we can use any of these uh, below this we have a different stuff what is nginx how to use this image it provides us different commands that we can use i'm going to be uh, explaining you step by step these are uh, a bit complex commands so here we can actually actually go up and we can try selecting any of the version as well so let's try this version 1.25.3 okay so i'm going to open up my terminal and i'm going to run the command docker and i'm going to write pull nginx and i can simply hit enter and it's going to to check if it's already exist in my system if it does not exist it's going to pull this up okay and if i want to specify specific version let me see which version i saw that so i'm going to write 1.25.3 and i'm going to hit enter so it's going to download and install this particular image with this version in my system okay so let me pull this on the left side and uh, i'm going to open up the doc desktop as well so it's downloading and as soon as it downloads it's going to be visible over here on the right side in the docker desktop as well and we can also verify by running the docker images command in the terminal so you can see that it has downloaded and on the right side this is the uh this is what it's looking like so yeah so this is the nginx it has downloaded and here we can actually check docker images and it's going to show us this particular image that we have pulled all right and uh, we can change the version this way we can pull up all the variants of nginx or other image and run in our system so i'm going to to first of all i'm going to run this particular image and convert it into the container i'm going to write docker let me clear this terminal so you have a clear view of it so i'm going to write docker run engine x colon and let's write the version of it so 1.25.3 i'm going to hit enter so it's going to run the container out of this image i can go to the container and here you can see that it gives us a name automatically it gives us a random name we can also customize this name through command as well which i'm going to show you you can see this particular nginx is currently running in my system all right let me stop it i can stop it from my terminal as well but currently you can see that the terminal is not responding okay i need to run 
the terminal currently it is going to exit it i need to run the container and keep the terminal intractable as well and for this i can actually pass this flag hyphen d it's going to run this container again you can see on the right side it has given the random name and this container is running and uh, my terminal is intractable as well okay so let me clear this terminal and in this terminal i can actually check that how many containers are running currently in my system so i can write docker ps so it is showing this particular container for this particular image which is running currently in my system and uh, this is the container id which is very useful for uh, starting stopping resuming uh, the container and uh, if i if i want to run any other container i can actually write a docker ps uh, this this command actually shows all the containers but it's also going to show us uh, the container which is running currently the first one is running all other are exited so it's just showing the data which is being shown on the right side actually okay uh, all the containers plus the container which is running all right so make sure you remember and pass the hyphen d flag when you are running the container in your terminal okay and uh, hyphen a again is going to show all the containers and uh, there is another command that is docker logs and uh, i can actually pass the container id let me copy it from it and i'm going to paste it and i'm going to hit enter it's going to give us all the logs that is processing for this container it is currently running and on the right side we can also see all the logs that uh, are happening for this particular container if i click on this running container these are all the logs that i can see and on the left side we can see similar things on the terminal as well inspect bind mount exec files states all these things are pretty useful all right so on the left side let me run the nginx on the browser so this is what i'm going to show you now i'm going to write docker run hyphen d and uh, on the right side you can see that uh, this particular thing is actually if i open this up uh, we can uh, run this engine x on a particular port okay so hyphen d and then i'm going to pass it the hyphen p flag okay and then it is actually needs to run 9000 this is the port that i can give it to any then 80 is the default port of nginx uh, that it uses okay and then i can actually give the name of that image so nginx colon and uh, what's what's the version of it so it's 1.25.3 and i'm going to hit enter all right so let's go to the containers and here you can see that uh, it is uh, running the container again and let me stop the other one previous one and it's currently running on localhost 9000 i can click on it and here you can see that how simple was it to pull the image of nginx and run it on the browser we don't need to configure it locally in our system so let's explore some more commands so i ran the container on specific port and it gave it some random name i want to give it my own name so i'm going to come in the terminal and uh, i'm going to run the same image as a container and i'm going to write docker run hyphen hyphen name this is the flag and then i can write nginx mod this is the name i have given to it hyphen d to make terminal intractable hyphen p to give it a port and then i can give it my port that i want to give it to and after this i want to give it nginx colon one point two five point three okay and i'll hit enter so it's going to run in the container and you can see on the right side that it has given this name nginx mod and it has given this port i can click on it and i can simply run it so we are able to run the container by giving it a specific name all right and uh, it's currently running and i can try writing docker ps and it's going to show me that running container again all right and uh, let me go and stop this container which is already running and i'm going to copy this particular container id which is running and i can write over here docker stop and paste that container id and i'm going to hit enter so it's going to take some time and it's going to stop that running container 
and you can see that the container is stopped in the docker desktop as well as in this terminal so let's go and write docker ps it will not show any running container over here i can simply start the container again if i have the container id by writing the docker start and paste that particular container id it will be running again the benefit of uh, uh, using the start keyword rather than run because run actually creates a new instance in this uh, list for all the containers running okay but start actually uh, use the same instance of that container and reruns it so it's better to use a start when you have created a one container instance for an image uh, rather than uh, using a run all right so it's going to use the same configuration which we give the port and uh, all the stuff uh, like the intractable mod using the hyphen d uh, flag okay so i can actually restart if there might be an error uh, in current uh, instance which is running i can restart that so let me uh up arrow and i can re restart it so it's going to stop this and it's going to restart it it's so quick that uh we are unable to see but it's so useful when you find some kind of error uh in your uh, docker container which is already running and we can also pause this thing so docker pause and then i'm going to paste that container id so i'm going to hit enter you can see that it is currently paused and uh, it's going to be working over here if i click on the start and simply when it is paused we can run the same command docker start and the container id and it will start working again all right um, and rather than uh, giving it the start command there seems like let's let's say we are starting this container okay and then i'm going to pause this all right so it's paused and uh, there is a keyword called unpause as well so it's going to unpause the same container um, uh, so if it is paused rather than using start again it's better to use unpause all right so the next command i want to show you is uh, and obviously we can remove the current container by writing docker remove and uh, i'm going to write the container id so it's going to get removed so actually if we cannot remove the running container we first need to stop that so i'm going to stop the container by writing docker stop and then i'm going to remove that particular container all right so it is removed on the right side in the docker uh, desktop you can see that it is removed as well so let's clear the terminal to make it clear for you guys all right so now i'm going to uh, press the up arrow on my keyboard to see all the commands i wrote in this terminal i'm going to run the same image of with this uh, name again all right so it has started running again um, and now i want to see some states of it okay so let's try to uh, see the container which is running in order to copy the container id okay so i have copied the container id and now i want to see the states we can also see the states by clicking on this running instance and go to this states so it's going to show us how much memory it's using cpu there is there is some kind of concept that uh, how docker works how it uses the os kernel how is it different from the virtual machine that we install separately in our system the main difference is that virtual machine takes a uh, space in your system in gbs but docker takes space in mbs because docker uses the os kernel of your operating system on which you are running the docker but the virtual machine actually creates its own os kernel that's why its size is bigger and the docker is faster as well okay so currently this is running and we can see the states as well in the terminal as well so i can write the states okay so so it's going to show us all the states uh, memory usage limit cpu usage and these stuff all right so 
these were the basic commands that you need to know in order to use docker for others projects or for your own projects there are more commands like docker build docker save docker load but for that i need to build a small node application i can use any technology to configure docker with so let's get started and build a small project that will not be so advanced this is a beginner's tutorial so let's open up the vs code which i've already opened and in this vs code i'm going to open up the terminal and first of all i'm going to create a new folder and uh, let's see node docker beginner all right so you can use uh, any other code editor as well and inside it i'm going to create a new folder let's say source and inside the source folder i'm going to create a new file let's say index.js all right so in the terminal i'm going to write the cd node uh docker beginner all right and uh, i'm going to initialize it with npm first of all all right so npm init hyphen y it's going to create package.json file um, and uh, then i can install different node packages all right so in this folder you can see that it has created package.json file it has given the name it has given the default file and uh, we can also add different scripts i hope that you have already aware of uh, the node npm structure if you don't know i've created a complete crash course on my channel consists of almost 45 videos you can learn everything about node express mongodb and creating rest apis all right so in the terminal what i'm going to do is first of all i'm going to come here and i'm going to build a small server of node so when i will be building uh, the project and uh, building the docker image of this project i should be able to run it on the browser and without creating a server i will not be able to do that so as you know that a uh, node comes with uh, this default package require http and uh, then i can simply write the const server equals to the http dot create server and here i can have these two properties request and then the response actually this is the request all right so inside it uh, i can set uh, the content type or the header so let's try to do that uh, right head and uh, then let's give it a port 2200 and then let's give it the content type simply uh, for giving it actually this is the content type and uh, after this we need to give it text slash plain all right so it has been set after that we can simply return the response by writing the response dot end hello i am docker in node okay so this has been added now i can simply write the server dot listen and i can give it any port so let's try first of all if the server is running properly on my browser so i can write node src index.js actually slash index.js i'll hit enter so i can actually write some uh success message as well but i'm going to open up the browser and see if it's working fine uh so i'm going to write localhost colon 3000 and here you can see that hello i'm docker in node it means that our server is running perfectly all right so here first of all i'm going to install one package just to show you that uh, we can build the packages as well that we installed using the npm so i'm going to install one small package called lodash so npm install lodash and uh, it will be installed in package.json let's try to import this one as well so it we can actually get it with the underscore equals to require lodash all right so it has been required and uh, before returning the response i can simply use this particular package it is not required for this server i will just be showing you uh, uh, to use this npm package uh, and include it in the build process of the docker for this project okay so let's try to get the maximum value using an underscore dot max and then i can simply write the numbers okay and uh, here i can write uh, i can pass the max value as well okay 
so let's save it and uh, let's run the server again notes src let's open up the browser and let's refresh and the three is the maximum so it means that our package is perfectly running all right so we are done with creating the server now it's time to configure our project with docker so there are two ways basically to build our project using docker one is using the docker file other is using the docker compose docker compose uh, is used when we have a multi-container application when we use any image of from the docker hub uh, like if we are building the node express application and we have pulled the mongo db image from the docker hub so we have our own project files and we want to use that image from that docker hub and to combine both of these things to build uh, the image for our project including the image of the docker hub the mongo db we will be using docker compose but in this application since this is the tutorial for beginners i will not be using any image from the docker hub so i can use the docker file as well which is simpler okay if we don't have any third party uh like uh, any image from the docker hub so i'm going to create a new file in my project so make sure you give it a same name and i'm going to give it the docker file which is the name all right so this file can contain a lot of different commands first of all we we need to give it different technologies that it needs to use so that later on if someone uh use this project in order to run it in their system they don't need to install these tools or the software uh, um, like programming languages okay so i can write capital from and i can write node okay so let's let's figure out what is the current version of node installed in my system so that uh, if it's running fine in my system i don't want it to be break uh, in others system as well so i want to use the same version so this is the version which is being used in my system so 20th dot uh, 9.0 and i've given that whenever a uh, docker is going to build the project it's going to first install node uh, in their system whoever is using my project so that they don't need to download the node and after that i need to give it a work directory and work directory is for the container and uh, when we will be building this project into an image we need to run the container out of that image so i'm going to give it the directory name app uh, this is the directory for that container okay and then i need to give it some uh, uh you can say uh, different files that needs to be copied within this app directory for that container which are required for running this project so i can write the copy and first of all i want to uh, pass the package static dot json inside the app okay static means uh includes the package or json file or any other thing that starts with the package okay so this is going to copy it and then what i need to copy i need to copy the source folder as well okay so i can write uh copy and then src within the app directory of that container okay so now after this once i'm done with it uh i'm going to let docker run this command npm install so what it's going to do is it's going to install all the dependencies which are installed in package.json file first i loaded package.json file then it's going to copy the source folder and then it's going to um, install it um, um, in this docker file and after this once everything is configured and we might have few more commands when we will be having a big project um, that we are building using docker and then we need to find run the cmd command okay cmd command uh, let's say in in my terminal i used node and then the name of that file source slash index.js so i can write comma and after this i can write index.js i don't need to write source because i have passed us all the files within the source folder uh, inside the app folder of my container so it will automatically find all the files within the source folder all right so let's save this file the docker file okay so now in the terminal let me clear the terminal and uh, now what i need to do is i need to build this project 
in in and convert it in the image all right so in the terminal i was using the uh, previous terminal uh, the lo the default terminal of my system i can use the terminal of my vs code as well first try to see if it's actually working here yes it's working in my vs code terminal and then i'm going to write docker build and then i'm going to write hyphen t command okay and then i can actually give the name to this image and along with the name i can give it the version as well all right so here i can write uh, let's say node hyphen docker hyphen beginner this is the name i have given to it then i can give the version of it so let's give it 1.1 which is the name of version and then space i need to give the path of the docker file okay and the docker file exists directly in the home directory like in directly in the home node docker beginner folder so i can simply write dot okay uh, so and i'm going to hit enter okay it's going to take some time and it's going to process the docker file it's going to install by running npm install and it's going to build an image out of my project all right so it has actually built uh, my project using the docker file let me clear this out and i'm going to write docker images it's going to list down all the images installed in my system and the first one is the image inside the docker and its size is 1.1 gb all right so this much size it has created the image out of this project so quickly it is created 14 seconds ago this is the image id this is the variant of this image if i show you the docker desktop and this is the images and it also contains the node docker beginner image all right and now let's try to run it using this image i'm not going to use the source index.js file okay and i'm going to use this image to run my project all right uh, imagine that i have pulled it from the docker hub and i'm going to run it so i'm going to write the docker hyphen uh, run hyphen d and uh, then i'm going to give it hyphen p and the word uh, the port so 3000 and then the 3000 and uh, let's give it the name of that image exact image name okay so node hyphen docker hyphen beginner and then i'm going to write one dot one okay let's hit enter all right so our container is running um, let's detect by running the docker ps and uh, these are the two containers which are running first one is the recent one uh, let's open up the docker desktop as well to verify so the this is the link so we can see that it has given the random name we can give our own name i showed you uh you can use that hyphen hyphen name flag uh to give it the this name so this is running on local host column 3000 let's click on it and you can see that uh, this server is not running in my vs code terminal this is the docker image which i have built using the docker file configuration all right so we are able to build this now final thing i want to show you let's say that uh you want to share it with your friend you want to convert that image so uh, where you can find that image that you have built okay so here you can see that uh, uh, it is immutable you cannot change uh, the internal files or the internal data of this image okay so in order to share it with your friend uh, you would like to zip it or you would like to host it on the docker hub but if you want to uh, send it through email or through messages that this is the project that i've created just pull it and run this image so in order to do that let's uh, i'm going to stop this image now so it's taking some time to stopping it let's uh, let's leave it so in the terminal of vs code um, i'm going to use that image so let's see this is the the first image so i'm going to write docker save command hyphen o flag and then i can give the any name to that you can call it a zip file but the actual extension of this file is dot tar okay so i can write node uh a beginner i have changed the name dot tar this is the name which i have given and then i need to give the exact name of my image so i can write node hyphen docker hyphen beginner colon 1.1 this is the name of the image all right so i think this is pretty much good let's hit save
okay so it's going to convert the image uh, into .tr file so that we can share it with our friends by sending it through email or uh, and also it has created this temp temp file and uh, it has created node hyphen beginner dot tr file um, this is of the pretty much same size 1.05 um, and uh, let's close it and now when someone is going to receive this .tar file, how they are going to load it in their system so it becomes the part of their uh, their Docker uh, image list. Okay, so first of all, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go to the images and uh, when they are going to load it, it's going to show the same name of that image. Since we have already using the same name, it's not going to load up, I believe. So here I'm going to delete this image. First of all, it's not get letting me delete that. The reason is that um, it's actually having the container added over here. All right. So now let's go to the images and uh, I'm going to delete it now. It's going to be deleted now. It's not existing currently in my system with that name node docker beginner. Okay, so I have this file which I want to load up in my images list. Currently, if I run docker images, you will see that uh, that uh, image which I built is not existing. I want to use .tr file to load that image now. So I can write in the terminal. Let me clear this out. So docker load hyphen i and then I'm going to give the name of that file um, and uh, I'm inside that project folder so I can write node hyphen beginner dot tar. All right. So hit enter. So it's going to take some time and it's going to load this .tr file, convert it into an image form and added it in my Docker images list. So let's wait for it and see that how it goes. Uh, I'm going to open up that Docker desktop as well. And uh, yes, so it has loaded that up and uh, it is showing that particular image node Docker uh, beginner and you can see it is its status is unused means that it is just created. Um, and uh, let's see now Docker images. And uh, the first one is this one, which is just uh, and the timestamp is the old one. It is it has picked up that same timestamp when I built the image for this particular project. All right. So uh, we have covered up the basic fundamentals of the Docker. What is Docker? How to use Docker um, and uh, how Docker works? What are the different commands we need to know in order to use Docker? And the simplest project in Node I have configured using Docker file. I've showed you how we can build the project using Docker and make it a shareable format. OK, and uh, this is the tutorial for beginners. I'm going to be making some more videos on Docker. Uh, let me know in the comment below that uh, which project my stack is JavaScript. I use JavaScript for building full stack applications. Um, my plan is to show you how to configure Docker in big Node Express MongoDB applications using Docker Compose. And uh, I can actually show you how we can configure Docker in React or Next.js 14 applications. Let me know in the comment below. So you can see that I'm putting a lot of effort, guys. So subscribe my channel, like this video. See you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.